So welcome back to Ignite TV with Ian McCormick. This is the second part of his testimony about dying, going to heaven, meeting God, talking to with God. So we're just going to pick up in on where we left off last week and you were your spirit was leaving your body. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And so tell us what happened then. What was it feeling like when that moment happened? Yeah. I think the sensation was quite amazing. It was it was like a um, release. The battle to stay alive had finished. It was like a, a freedom. We had been fighting. Suddenly it was like, oh, you can take your breath again. Wow. But then in a split second, I was standing upright in a place of complete darkness. And I'm going, did I just die? Is that real? Or have I been asleep? You know how sometimes you can be asleep and you're not sure how long it's been and I've just woken up from mm. a deep sleep. Mm. And it felt like seconds, but could it have been hours? Because sometimes you, you can lose track of time. And so my first thought, well, I'm alive. It's dark. I must be in the hospital. Oh, well, then don't panic. Let your eyes accustomed to the dark and you'll see some light. So I turned 360 around. No light. Well, that's weird. I mean, there was a bit of a moon tonight. So, okay, just find the light switch. So when you you know, you could be a bit disoriented. You put your hand and foot out and looking for a light switch. If you stay at a friend's place, you're kind of doing that. So I'm thinking I'm in the hospital. You don't want to trip over a bedpan or bump, bump into some poor patient. So I creep out looking for the wall to find light switch. Can't find it. I thought, well, there must be one near the, my bed. Should have thought that in the first place. So I, I edged my way back to where my bed should be. I thought, oh, God, now you've lost your bed, you idiot. So I'm kind of groping around the darkness trying to find a bed, a table, anything to touch. Mm. Well, that's weird. It's so dark you can't even see your hand in front of your face. So as I'm thinking that, I bring my hand up towards my face. As I bring it up to where my nose should be, it, and I, it passes straight through my head. I went, no, you can't miss your head. Two hands, oh, really. <laughs> Both hands straight through the head. I thought, what? Chest. Both hands straight through. Hands. I thought, I feel like I'm here, but when I go to touch my physical body, it's not. I thought, how can a man have that sensation? Then I remembered um, Grandad had fought in Gallipoli, as I said, and, and against Roman and Alain and men that came back from war often would comment that they could feel the leg or the limb was still there. Right. And my yeah. grandfather had, had shown me one of his friends, he had comrades of arm in the RSA, that had, he told, you know, he said, scratch my foot, Sonny, and there was no leg there when we visited him. And Grandad proceeded to tell me that this was common amongst men he had fought with. Interesting. And he was a regimental sergeant major, so he was RSM. So he, he knew. It mm. wasn't, he knew. He said, these men are not psychotic. These men tell me they can feel the limb. Mm. And he'd even talked about how a man had run with his leg blown off in Gallipoli in front of him, and his leg from his lower leg was gone, but he didn't fall over until he looked down to see the limb was missing. I thought, well, I potentially lost my entire body. That could be real. That could be back in the hospital. I could be out of my body, alive, with no physical form, but obviously a spiritual form. Where the heck am I? So I just took another breath and could feel the darkness wasn't just physical. It was a deep, cold, evil presence. It seemed to be permeated with something supernaturally evil. Now, I'm by nature not given to fear. I night dive. I'm, I'm not a fearful man. But B, I could feel a terror and an evil. I don't know if you've ever felt like something's looking at you or you feel there's a presence. Sometimes people feel it in a yes, home or yes. um, something outside or you walk into an environment and you have a cold chill or a, a terror. You know, even animals can sense that. I thought, where the heck am I? Then I felt movement in the darkness as if something in the darkness was aware of my presence and was coming directly towards me. As I stood there, I heard a man scream out of the darkness. I could sense his presence. He said, shut up. It was so violent and so angry. I went, I said nothing. And just in momentary reflect, lifted my right arm to, to block whatever was coming. Well, pretty weird with an invisible arm, but you know what I mean? I had that sense. And then another man you deserve to be here. I said, deserve to be where? Taken back by now, I'm flanked by two men. And a man in front of me said, you're in hell. Now shut up. I thought, hell? I don't believe in it. Mate, if this is hell, where's the flipping party? Mm -hmm. In my world, 
um, you know, hell was everything you couldn't do up here, you could do down here and get away with, you know, sex and drugs and rock and roll, what my body needs. Well, very hard to have a beer. <laughs> That'd be hell for most Kiwis. Couldn't find their flipping face. You know, put your laugh and go around that one, son. Hard to pull a bong or a chillum. So I'm standing here going, well, pretty hard to have sex because you can't touch this. Mm -hmm. So I'm suddenly having the Ibiza mosh party, the sex, drugs, rock and roll just get obliterated, thinking, my goodness sake, the hell that heathen like me had perceived, you know, Harleys and <laughs> wine, woman and so on, suddenly just blew into nothingness. This is pitch dark. And then I'm going, well, the religious boys talked about um, hellfire and brimstone, little boys with red jumpsuits, horns, mm. tried and pitchfork, mm. put another one on the barbie, you know what I mean? So I'm going, well, that's, all, that's also out, of, out to lunch because there's no physical bodies here. There's no corpses. Your dead corpse is back in the hospital where you die. This is a spiritual place. Yeah. So this concept of maggots and rotting flesh has to be uh, uh, like, a, like a, a parable or some kind of a metaphor, metaphorical. Mm. So where the worm might devour the flesh. Well, the flesh is the desires of a man's heart, immorality, drunkenness, adulteries. Now, if you don't have a physical body to enjoy the flesh, then it's metaphorical. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, mate, you can't enjoy that stuff. You have the desires because your heart, your spirit wants it, but you have no physical form to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So it's not physical worms eating rotting maggots, which I'd seen projected in arts and, and galleries and museums and churches where people have literally tried to take that principle and said, oh, it's all maggots. And then, of course, I'm thinking, where's the flipping fire? You know, but I have no concept, of course, the scriptures say that um, death and Hades or hell will be cast into the fire yeah. at the final judgment. Yeah. And that Lucifer is terrified of it. Yeah. His, his antichrist, the demons hate the fire mm. because God is an all consuming fire. So the actual author of fire in the Bible is God. And of course, fire gives off light. Mm -hmm. it does. And so if there was fire there, there would be light. But this is a kingdom of darkness, which is devoid of light, light and fire. In fact, Paul the Apostle said in Acts 26, 18, kingdom of darkness ruled by Satan and the kingdom of light ruled by Christ. So black and white, mm. light, dark, mm. good, evil. Interesting. So I'm standing here going, mate, this could be the real hell. No physical body, can't get tired, can't hurt anybody. They'd love to rip your guts out, but they can't touch you because you're a spiritual being. And the only thing that they have peace down here is if they shut their face. Because if you go to a prison, they all want to tell you their story, and everyone in there says, shut your good face, mate. Heard it all before. Yeah, you're, we're all innocent, man. Yeah, 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 whatever. So the scriptures, I think, says, let there be silence in Sheol. Some, I think, in the Psalms, mm. 127 verse 18, let there be silence in Sheol. And it says, the dead don't praise the Lord, nor those who go down into silence. So your spirit being yeah, yeah. is totally aware Absolutely. of where you are. Yep. What's you, going on? You are still thinking and feeling. 100%. But you're not in your body. Yep. But you're not in heaven. Yep. And you're not in hell. You're in a Well, I mean, no, I'm in hell. This you is, are they, in hell. These men have just told me hell. And you're this in is, hell. This is the, what I'm trying to blow away is yeah. the concepts we have as a non-Christian, yeah. the heathen of hell, yeah. and even religious people of hell. Mm. So I'm in, a, I'm in what's called Hades. Yeah. Hell. The Bible says this isn't the final rest place. Hades will be cast into a lake of fire, which is called the second death. That's gracious. And so, and I'm standing here in Hades. Mm. But of course, I'm thinking, but I prayed. I still feel the deep peace in me. Even though this is around me, I realize they can't touch me. Mm. I have no concept, the scriptures say, greater is he within us than he's within the world. I have no concept because I've never read a Bible. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and evil, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. I had given Christ through the Lord's Prayer to become Lord and Shepherd of my soul. Split seconds before this. They're right. Yes. So that's just by like the thief on the cross. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mate, remember me. Today you'll be with me in paradise. So here I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death and deep darkness, and the evil can't touch me. Mm. Oh, one of the boys said, can't touch this, mate. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And here I'm standing. I can sense this incredible presence and power in me, evil all around me. I'm walking through it, getting a revelation of what hell is really like, mm. not some Disneyland or makeup. Mm. And I'm thinking, God has every right to have sent me here. Mm. And I wouldn't want my worst enemy to come here. Mm. 
And you couldn't tell time. You couldn't tell time whether you've been here five minutes or 5,000 years. So it's again another, it's like a it's holding. It's another It realm. says they're held in chains of darkness until the day of judgment. So this is not physical change. You are literally held as your, your spirit is darkness. Your own spirit will judge you into darkness. Does that make sense? But I'm walking as a son of God, son of light, having just got saved through the valley of the shadow of death. Next minute, pure light pierces from the darkness above me, pierces directly into, into, onto me. Now, light from a distance dissipates. I know that as a diver. But here, from a great distance, this light concentrated and pinpoints me, no one else. Powerful. And next minute, my entire being, you've ever seen sunlight come through clouds? Mm. Or, or you feel like dust is, you can see it. I used to sit at school and see dust go up into the light. Wow. I felt like a speck of dust literally caught up into the light. It says when Christ returns in his final judgment, those who are alive and know him will be caught up into the air. So I'm literally caught up in the air. I'm going up. So you feel yourself now lifting. Weightless, lifting up. Lifting and I'm up. thinking, what's this? The only red thing, I don't think it's Star Trek beam me up, Scotty. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, what the well, heck is going on? Well, that's our frame of reference, isn't What's it? my frame of reference? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know biblical reference, but I don't even know the Bible. I've never read the thing. Yeah. So I'm going up in this light, and then I'm going, is this real? And so I look back to check it out. Sure enough, the darkness is dissipating far beneath me. And then I have a Sunday school story about Sodom and Gomorrah, how the angel said to, to Lot and his wife, whatever you do when we deliver you from these cities, we're about to send fire and torch them. Don't look back, lest you die. And then I'm, I'm looking back, remembering the Sunday story of the wife who looks back. I'm thinking, how dumb are you? Don't look back. Wow. You may end up coming out of this light back into where you've just been delivered from. So I turn my eyes instantly back on, onto this radiance, and I can see far above me a circular opening where the light's emanating forth from. Oof. I'm being drawn out of a kingdom of darkness up into this extraordinary glorious light. Remember reading later, light shines in the darkness, and the darkness flees. You know, those walking in darkness have seen a great light. Well, I am drawn up. I come to the opening of this um, circular shape opening, where, which is between two kingdoms. Yep. I see a long, narrow passageway, and at the extremity, I can see the kingdom of light. I can feel the power and presence. It's like a, a, a drawing me, just drawing me at the speed of light. But of course, because you've got no physical body, I'd been in you know, Harley's and yeah. old Triumph Bond. You know what speed's we used to, like? Oh, we yeah. speed, but we used to wind them up. We had RX 350s. I mean, we used to wind these things up, get up to 100. We had no helmets in those days, and, and you'd blow the water out of your eyes because you're going so fast. And this is at the speed of light. But of course, you've got no physical form. Mm. It's just moving at that speed. I thought, look at that light. And of course, um, Jesus said, small and narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of God. Mm. <laughs> I am the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'd been looking for the way, the truth. And he said, I am the light. Those who come to me shall no longer walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So I'm moving towards this amazing, amazing light. Thicker intensity light comes off the end towards me like a wave. In a surfing term, you'll see like a wave of foam. This wave of light comes up, passes into me and through, through me, I feel a living emotion deposited. I feel comfort. Interesting. Absolute comfort. Now, I tried southern comfort, false comfort, mate, death charge. We tried everything. <laughs> I looked for the worm in the bottom of the tequila. Here, comfort hit me. I thought, that's a, living, that's a living light. It's got an emotion. I move further down, another wave, peace. From the tip of my head to the tips of my feet, I think it says, taste and see that the Lord's good. Taste of that fruit. I mean, I'm going, it's a living emotion. Everyone's looking for peace, peace of yeah. mind, inner peace. Yeah. Peace floods me. I thought, man, in that darkness, my hand went through my face. I wonder if in this light I can see my human form. So I turn, stop in the tunnel, and here's my arm, no longer bone and flesh, transparent, but it's an arm, hand, fingers. I can look at it and see, and it's my hand. It's responding. So you started to see the form of your spirit man. Absolutely. It's, and it's the same, it looks Powerful. the same shape as a human form, but it's got no bone and flesh. 
It's a spiritual being of light. I'm going, that means your inner man is more real than your physical man. You've been built for eternity. You've been built as sons and daughters of light to live forever. But we've walked in darkness so long, God's come to deliver us from that kingdom (laughs) and restore us to be sons and daughters of light because God is the father of light. So I'm now seeing my spiritual body of light literally out of its physical form and realize that's why men who had lost limbs and and have lost legs actually still feel it. Because they're They're feeling their spirit. spirit. Wow. And in fact, and of course, Peter got out of the boat, we find that, and he walked on water (laughs) because until he looked down and said, oh God, I can't do that on my physical body, he sank. But up until then, he was walking in the spirit. Interesting. So the spirit's more real than the physical. Isn't That's it? why you feel like you can live forever, but your body's packing a sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you feel like you're the $6 million man. Yeah. So here I am. I'm going, oh, my God, this is me. I'm alive. I'm out of my body. This is real. What the heck? Mm-hmm. I want to see more. So as I look more towards the light, yeah. I start moving again. Another wave of light hits me. Absolute joy, an inexplicable joy. I thought wherever I'm going is the most awesome thing a human being could possibly encounter. I felt like I was literally full of light. I felt like I was just exploding with light. And my whole being was just anticipation, like I'm going to the most amazing place. Wow. So I come out of the tunnel. Where the tunnel had made it look small and constricted, unrestricted access, a light with an enormity that I thought, this is like Jules Verne, journey to the center of the, not the earth, or the sea, journey to the center of the universe. I have come into the center of the cosmos, all life, light, galaxies, constellations must come from this light. What is this light? And you knew this. This is what oh, I you can were see thinking. It. You were thinking, you were seeing. Well, this you don't cosmos. leave your brain behind when you die. Yeah. You don't leave your heart, your emotions. The only thing you leave behind is your physical body. You're as much alive as if I am talking to you right now. You, people say, well, how can it? Because your your heart actually has its mind too. People don't realize. You oh, can it do, does. Yeah. You can do heart transplants, yep. and the person's memories and thoughts can be in that heart. Mm. So out of the heart is the wellspring. So and it's not just the physical heart; it's you, who you are, the inner man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the core that, of who you are. That's right. That's our self. That's our it's core you, self. Who you is, are, is the inner so man. I am now looking at a an, at a light, and it seems to be brighter in the core. I thought, is there someone in there, or is this some innate? source of good and evil within the in the universe. Mm-hmm. This is just an innate presence and power. Mm-hmm. As I'm thinking this, <laughs> a man speaks from the center of the light. As soon as I heard his voice, the same man who spoke to me on the beach said, beg for your life, don't hit the guy, and lead me through the Lord's Prayer. Same voice. Same man. Wow. He said, And then he said, Ian. Thought, How do you know him? <laughs> he said, Ian, do you wish to return? So he's answering, one, there is someone. Two, he's calling me by name. Three, return where I have I just come from from hell, Hades. <laughs> have I just come out of my body? So I'm just looking back, going, "Oh my God, that darkness is there. Is this real?" I said, "Look, if if I'm dead out of my physical form, I wish to return." And I'm thinking two things: Am I alive in an NDE, and I'm having endorphins, starvation of oxygen, I'm tripping out of my skull? Right. Yep. Or am I physically dead, out of my body, talking to a being of light? I had no idea that the neurotoxin had caught, killed me, of course, mm. and I'd been pronounced dead and was now being moved out of the A&E into the morgue. But I couldn't see this. No, I find were, this out later. Right. So I wasn't near death. I was actually you clinically were dead. clinically dead, yep. hearing and seeing in a different realm. Outside of this realm. People said, oh, yeah, mate, your mind. You, you, you were heart dead but not brain dead. I go, woo woo. Neurotoxin from the box jellyfish hits the brain and mm-hmm. kills it. Mm-hmm. So when you die with neurotoxin, you're, you're dead, brain dead at death. So can the human soul or heart live outside of being brain dead? Absolutely. And when you see a dead corpse, you know the loved one that you talk to and, and fellowship with. And I've just buried my mum. It's a shell. The person you love, the life has gone out of them. Where is that life gone? Where is that light gone? Where is that person gone? I'm realizing now, of course, my dead shell is potentially back in the hospital. I'm actually, in reality, talking to a being of light who's asking me if I want to go back into it. I said, I don't know where I am. If I'm dead out of my physical body, I truly wish to return. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see in a new light. I thought, light, see the light. I said, are you the true light? He said, Ian, God is light, and in him there is no darkness 
at all. 1 John 1 5. Mm. As he's speaking this, the words, just like I'd seen the Lord's Prayer in the ambulance, words of light appear in front of me. I'm hearing him. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. All his word is truth and his truth sets us free. So I'm reading words. God is light. Mm. What does that mean? God is light. I've never read a Bible, so I'm I'm confused. I'm going, is this Roman numerology? Oh. Yeah, because you're an atheist. You've, you've not read the Bible. You no. don't even know what this is, right? No, no. And I'm going, darkness. Well, the darkness have just come from, they call it hell. And so I looked around because I had looked at um, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, Taoism, yin and yang stuff. Yeah. On, my, on my surfboard, I had yin and yang, yeah. light and darkness within the circle of life, equal and opposite. I'm standing here going, whoa, whoa, this is different. <laughs> Is there any darkness? So I look around, none. And I look behind me because everyone cast a shadow and then I couldn't see a shadow. Why? Because I had no physical form to cast a shadow. The light was passing through my spiritual body of light and casting no shadow. Interesting. And, of course, the only, the only religious book on the planet that teaches that God is light and in him there's no darkness is the Bible. Mm. So suddenly here I've gone, oh, my God, in the yin and yang, they had... A dot of darkness in the light, impossible. Impossible. And, a, and yet you can have light in the darkness, absolutely. But light and darkness are not equal and opposite. Darkness can never invade light. Mm. Mm. Light will always, always displace darkness. Displace. Darkness can never yeah. replace it. Yet what we've done, we've got light and darkness in us because of our mixed bag, but we've projected our fallen image and created a God in our fallen image. But God himself has no no darkness. So you're in this place oh, having right. this all this understanding yeah. just come into you. Download. Download. I'm, I'm just going download. Yeah. Oh my God. This is God. Look at the radiance and the glory and unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing going, if that's Almighty God, He knows my name. He knows my thought before I even speak. He must see everything. Someone's made a dreadful mistake and beamed the wrong man up. Surely they must know. But what my life's like, what am I doing here? I should crawl under some rock or go back into hell where I belong. I don't be belong here. In fact, Jesus said men hate the light, least their evil deeds are exposed. Well, mm. I, could, I understood that. So I began to move back. As I moved back towards the darkness to self-judge, Right. raves of light emanate from him. And I'm thinking, here it comes, the wrath, the anger of God. But instead of anger and wrath, what hits me, is pure, unadulterated liquid love. Oh, come on. Oh, my whole being tingled. Oh, I can feel that when you say that. That is that true. I felt tears yeah. instantly hit me as the presence of this love. I'm thinking, love? Why would God love a man like me? My oh, God, surely you must know. And wave after wave of love started oh. hitting me. So I've gone oh. through comfort, yep. peace, joy. Now love and acceptance. And I said, but. Don't you know? So perhaps he's so old he doesn't know. I don't want to get in there and then be booted out. You know, they find out they got the wrong man. So I thought, well, I might as well tell him now. I said, well, I've cursed you. More love. I said, well, I better be more specific. I've broken commandments, a heap of them. More love. Every time I told him something, the love got more intense. I thought, well, I've committed adultery. I've, I've taken drugs. I've slept around with a heap of women. And as I said, the worst sin is I just ratcheted up. I thought, well, I better tell him the worst, sickest, most mm. whacked out stuff I've ever done. As I, and I'm sure we all waiting to hear it, but I'm not going to tell you. No. It's just, forget it and sort your own mess out. So I just told him that, and the love hit me. Come well, on. I'd been taught that men don't cry. Mm. Oh, something busted in here. Oh, Ian. I just sobbed. I couldn't. I tried to control it. It got worse. Mm. I thought if I if I was in the human body, I'd have buckets of tears and snot pouring out of me. I mean, I was just bawling like a little boy. I hadn't cried since I was 12. My, my, the men who brought me up were military guys, you know, background. They yeah. just went, Warren officers, and they just said, men don't cry, boy. Mm. Only, only boys, men don't cry. So I'd controlled it since I was 12. Here I'm 26, weeping like I've never wept, just sobbing. And as I'm doing this, God speaking to me, said, Ian, in that ambulance, when you prayed the Lord's Prayer, I didn't forgive some of your sins, son. I forgave all of them. Wow. So what can wash away my sins? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Though my sins be scarlet red, the prophet said, huh? Isaiah the prophet said, I can make him as white as snow. 
gosh, I can feel that. And I went, oh, my God, Mm. my whole being has been white as snow. It's been washed, cleansed. God sees no darkness, no sin. That is called the amazing grace of God. We used to sing it on New Year's Eve, you know, usually drunk or stoned, amazing grace, you know, boom. Boom. There it is. Saved by grace. (laughs) Grace alone. Was I baptized in water? No. Was I baptized in the Holy Spirit? No. I was baptized in God's love. I was saved by repenting of my sins, forgiving others, and in the Lord's Prayer, which is the best salvation prayer on the planet, I got saved in my dying seconds. And had I not prayed that, I wouldn't be where I was right now. God listens to the heart. He is now pouring light into me. I literally feel like an empty vessel being filled up from my ankles. to I could feel it coming up to my waist, to my chest. And then as I stood there, all shame, all guilt, God, wow. God, I opened my eyes and I was literally inundated with pure love. Wow. And it was literally pouring out of me and surrounding me. Two to three feet, I had a radiance and glory that was full of pure love surrounding me. I was encased, cocooned in a capsule of love, the outer wow. heart of God. Wow. I don't know how the heck. Yeah. Love, love, eternal love. So deep, deep, calling out to deep. My whole being knew I was home. I thought I've been created for this. I've been created to be loved. The greatest is love. We love because he first loved us. Mm. Love covers a multitude of sin. God so loved the world he came to save it. Mm. He just saved me. And I stood there and I looked and I saw the radiance of the light that surrounded him that went off into infinity was love. The glory was love. And the Holy Spirit glorifies the Son. Holy Spirit gives off fruit, love, peace, joy. Now I've had many other spirits, drunken, adulterous, perverted, yeah. lustful. Here, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God is glorifying His Son. And I'm standing in what the Jewish people call the outer courts, being inundated with love, inexplicable love, rooted and grounded in love, the height, the depth of that love that surpasses knowledge. I am filled up. Peace. The, the waves of light ceased. An incredible tranquility of peace just settles. I took another breath. I thought, oh, my God. Wow. I wonder if I could come into the light and see him face to face. I'm so close. I thought, well, he loves me so much. But I had the fear of God in me. I thought, if I'm not permitted, please tell me to stop. But I want to see you. Put a name to God. Yeah. And I want to ask you the meaning and truth to life. I know I'd never, never need to ask another human being. If I see you, I will know who God is. Amazing. So I stepped forward towards the, the radiance. As I did, I seemed to envelop into it. Mm. Um, it's as though my being was walked into the light. Mm. So my own spiritual body seemed to be eclipsed inside the light. Inside were like veils, like miniature stars. When I look up in the heavens at night, I feel about that big. But when I walked into this realm, the stars looked that big, and I looked like I was standing in the realm of the galaxies of heaven. Wow. Now, we're created in the image of God. So often we don't realize the sons and daughters of God, who we really are. We, we still keep ourselves in this size. But being created in the image of God, God holds the universe in the palm of his hands. And as you walked into that, into that, you became part of it. Well, I was getting to realize that I was actually um, seeing the heavens in a totally different realm. Wow. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So our, our finite understanding of, of reality of the, of the cosmos is suddenly changed when you step out of the physical form into the heavenly realm. Mm. And these veils of light, it was like I was walking in and these, these like miniature stars were actually coming into my spirit and healing my broken heart. Oh, wow. Beautiful. I'm thinking, That's what? beautiful. I then began to weep again because mm. this light was going into my heart of hearts that mm. no girlfriend... No family member ever got to. I had walls of woundedness and protecting myself from any more pain, but this love had went over that and began healing my broken heart. And I cried, not from sadness, I cried with joy. Wow. I thought, how can a man have an emotion where he's weeping but happy? I don't know, but I'm happy. How can you have this kind of love? Yeah. How can someone heal your broken heart? You haven't even met him. And it says, he can come in boldly into the throne of grace. The veils have been opened and torn into the Holy of Holies. As the veils began to part, I, I could see a man standing. And as I saw him, I thought, that's God. 
the radiance coming out of his face, mm. the epicenter of all the light in the universe was actually coming out of his face. It was seven to ten times brighter. I thought if he spoke, galaxies, star systems, the cosmos, would literally come out of his face if he spoke. His hair was pure white down to his shoulders. His robes were pure white, made up of this light I just walked through. But it was a man, same size as me, a human man. I thought, that's Jesus, but that's God. But he, Jesus has brown hair. What's he got white hair? And I thought, is it going to hurt my eyes? So I looked away because the brightness was like looking into the epicenter of like a million laser lights, galaxies within galaxies in his face. Incredible. I now realize he spoke and the worlds came to existence. There you go. <laughs> All things were made through him and for him. Nothing came into existence apart from him. <laughs> in, the, in the Genesis, it let us make man in our image. He was in the garden. I'm going, but that's Jesus. But that's, that's not a dead one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a Jesus, the hippie kind of one, you see. He's glorified. Mm. I'd never read until later, Revelations 1, 13 to 18, John the Apostle saw Jesus glorified. He said, his head and his hair were white like wool, like snow. His face shone like the sun of full strength. He said, don't be afraid. I was dead. We're on a cross, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. I hold the keys of death and Hades. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In me is life, eternal life, resurrection life. And Daniel had seen the Ancient of Days, the Father, and he sat on a throne of fire and his hair and was white the same. Because Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Mm. So I'm looking at Christ glorified. And his, and his arms are outstretched as if to welcome me. Yeah. I'm Just one. looking straight at me. And I'm walking towards him. No fear. Light emanates from his face into mine. Instant purity. I feel the childhood innocence that I'd lost through, through sin and through lust and passion was restored. I felt the childlike innocence restored with purity. I thought, that's amazing. How can you make me pure? I walked closer. More light. This time, an abstract word, holiness. Mm. I felt a holiness emanate into me, and I felt instantly holy. And that is so interesting because religion says you have to do the right thing to be holy, yeah. right? And, and yet, of course, we all know that we can't do enough right. right. But you're saying his holiness made you holy. So fix your eyes upon Jesus and he will impart because he is the holy of holies. He is holy. God is holy. Yeah. You can't make yourself holy. You said our righteousness, our acts are like filthy rags. Yeah. And I'd never seen people, I'd seen people say, I'm holy. I'd seen Sadhus going around with chillums of hashish going mm. boom, 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 belay. And they call them holy men with dreadlocks. I'm thinking, what? I haven't seen anyone, priests that call themselves holy and go, yeah, nah, mm. nah. Mm. I've just seen righteousness, self-righteousness, judgment, holier than thou looking down upon people. And I'm going, no, no, only God can impart holiness. Yeah. In fact, the priesthood I read later, the Jewish priest, the high priest when he came in once a year, he had to prepare himself. Because if there was sin in him, he'd be struck dead. Yeah. But if he was okay, he would, he'd would he have to take his garments off so he couldn't transmit the holiness of God to the people. So what happens is that when we're as believers, we can pray for love, peace, and joy, but only God himself can impart holiness and purity to you. Mm -hmm. That's why he encourages you to come and meet him face to face. So I'm meeting him face to face. But not a not an historical Jesus, not a dead one hanging on a cross, a living, Thing. glorified one who's speaking and calling me by name. So I'm oh, just overwhelmed. So and I just walk up to him. It's like it's like a kid walking up to the queen. You know? <laughs> I mean, I had no idea that when the, in the Bible when they saw him, the priest fell. People prostrate themselves. They like did, man. I, I just walked up and just captivated by by the beauty of his holiness and. His love for me and arms, mm. arms of love outstretched. I came right up next to him and I couldn't see his face. I mm. thought, oh, mate, if I could get close, I could see his face. The features. Form. Yeah. 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 I had no idea the scripture say no man sees no. the face of God and lives. Well, <laughs> I am dead, but it says we will see him face to face in eternity, Revelation 22, mm. and, and he'll be holy unto God. I now know that if I'd seen his face right then, I couldn't come back. Because ah. without faith, it's impossible to please God. I wouldn't need faith if I'd seen him. Mm. I saw his form, 
Moses said, show me your face. And God said, no, I'll show my form and glory, lest you die. So I'm seeing his form. I'm seeing his glory. And as I'm trying to see his face, he steps aside. I thought, why has he done that? As he steps aside with his hand, all the light surrounding him moves, and I now have another portal behind him, as if he is blocking a doorway, a circular-shaped doorway, into a whole new cosmos. I look through, and I'm standing at the threshold of a whole new heaven, whole new earth. I'm going, what? Whole new earth. Flowers, trees, the light that's upon Christ is over all the creation. I knew if I stepped on it, even a big Frisian heifer stepped on it, because we used to milk cows at Okarari, 360 cows, dairy cows. And mm. I was a dairy, dairy ball consultant. <laughs> I'm looking, going, even a heifer jumped on that, the thing would spring back. So you're standing in front of another portal. Yep, open. Same and way. you can see through the portal. Absolutely. And you can see... Fields. Fields. Uh, opening and out. It's, it's like New Zealand. <laughs> it's well, close. of course, because of New course. Zealand is, you know, God's, I see mountains, God's land, blue right? sky, crystal yeah. clear river. And the Lord's going, and trees along the sides going, so this is the river of life, trees of trees of life, not a tree, trees of life. Yeah. I found out later that's exactly what it says. And I'm going, I never knew that God's got another planet. I thought we're going to save the planet, save the earth, save the whale. Mm. I had no idea that God had created. He said, I've created a new earth mm. and a new heaven. The old earth and the old heaven will pass away. Mm. How? With fire. The so elements will melt. So it's already created. It's created. How long did it take for God to create this one? God spoke and the worlds came to existence. Then he mm. had six days terraforming it. But he he has spoken. John, and we find the book of Revelation in the, in the first century, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. It's already created. Mm. Some people think they're going to try and fix this one. Why would he? He makes all things new. Well, he gives you a heavenly new body. He makes all things new. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Fascinating, because mm -hmm. they're, they're asking, you're, you're a king, yeah, but my kingdom, it's not of this world. So I'm looking at a kingdom he's prepared. Interesting. New body, new earth, new heaven, all things new. Yeah. I'm going, that's home. Why wasn't I born there in the first place? Why? You must be born again of the Spirit of God to enter in to the new heavens and new earth. You, no one can come in apart from him. He said, there's no other way. And we used to listen to the band, Steal Way to Heaven, you know, with yeah. Druid priests and all this kind of stuff, saying every way. Jesus said, no, no, if you're God, you want the truth. He said, there's no other way. I am the way. No one comes to the Father but by me. There's no other name given in heaven and earth by which you can be saved, save the name of Christ. Now, that's pretty heavy. That kind of eliminates a lot of stuff. And people say, how can you dare say that? Well, he's God. Mm. Yeah. I'd been to all the temples and seen Buddhas too. I've seen, these are men. He's not. You go to his tomb, there's no one there. He's risen. He's no longer here. He's somewhere else. Because he yeah. was God. This is why they killed him. He proclaimed to be God, not a prophet. He proclaimed to be God, and he was God. He said, you may kill the body, but in three days I'll raise from the dead. Mm. I've now seen a risen, glorified body with a person, and Jesus took on the former man. Although he was God, he took it on and showed us a way back into the Garden of Eden, back into eternity, back into what it should have been in the first place. And the world looks like a, a, a fallen paradise. Mm -hmm. I can take you to parts of the world I used to discover that were like parts of the Garden of Eden. I'm standing here going, it's paradise. It's like a Garden of Eden. I belong here. Why wasn't I born here? Then Jesus steps back in front of me. The door into eternity closes. I have a glimpse. He said, here, now that you've seen, do you wish to remain here? What He's giving you, you a return? choice. Absolutely. Interesting. Now, I don't believe everyone gets given the choice, but he obviously gave me a choice. Mm. I thought, well, I have no desire to go back. Apocalypse now, World War Three. Now that you've seen that, oh, you know, no, why no, would no, you want to go back? And I've talked to maybe 20,000 people in the last 40 years who have died face to face, who've yeah. come back. Yeah. And all of them say, yeah, nah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. This no. is pain, suffering, <laughs> who you know, war, rumors of war. Garden of Eden. Evil. I mean. Love, peace, um, joy, life. You suddenly figure out God's real. He's been blamed for everything that's wrong, for, mm. forgetting that there's a demonic powers of darkness, fallen angels, mm. evil spirits that have actually trashed and, and attacked men and ripped them to bits and abused them and then blame God for it. See, what kind of God would that happen? <laughs> Wars, butchery, all kinds of incest and murder and, and pedophilia. I'm standing here going, oh, my God. Yeah. That's home. Yeah. I said, God, I have nothing to return for. I, I'm not married. 
I have mm-hmm. no children or none that I know of. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not met, you know, I've got no debt. And he still didn't move. I thought, I'm going to say goodbye, cruel world. And then I'm just going to dive to the right or the left. Or Vita's own chow. Choose, yeah. I'm going in, mate. I was a rugby player, flanker. But I won't hit him. I'll dive over the try line. <laughs> That's how desperate so I want you, to do. So you were strategizing, I was strategizing to get how to that, get in there. That, yeah. And as I look back to say goodbye, cruel world, <laughs> here's a vision of my mum. Oh, come on. Hits me. Bam. I went, oh, oh my God. Wow. I've just tell God no one loves me. And here's mum. I wouldn't be here had she not been praying. I thought if I stepped in, this door into eternity would close. I wouldn't be able to come back. C.S. Lewis did the what line which wardrobe? Yes. Step in, couldn't come back. Couldn't come back. Into Narnia. It's a great I'm picture. going, oh my goodness sake, if I step through this door, will I ever be able to get back? I thought, no. In fact, I could perceive if I went through, I would look and I wouldn't see a door, I'd only see fields. Mm. And it says the heart hasn't conceived what God created. And it says, the, the former things will not come to remembrance. I realized that if I stepped through, I'd wonder if this world is real. It's as though you'd been born for the first time. And it says there's no pain, there's no suffering, no tears. So I don't believe anyone up there can see what's going on because how would they have the capacity to handle that kind of grief? Mm-hmm. Only God and, and, his, and the watchers, I believe, are, are actually that can watch this are angelic hosts mm-hmm. who are interceding and praying, guardian angels, warrior angels. But I don't believe human beings are actually able to see this because he makes all things new. No tears, no pain, no suffering, and the former things will not come to remembrance. Mm. And I knew if I stepped in, I'd wonder if this was the beginning of life for me. Because as you get older, memories fade, and you've, you're hanging on to glimpses of it. But it was as though all of that would be wiped. People say, well, how would you recognize people? I haven't seen people for 40 years and bump into them. You recognize them. I recognize them. Yeah. I recognize the person, the spirit. And in a second, I could yes. pick up. 40 years ago, the relationship I had, I believe absolutely. Yeah. Some people you might have thought were nobodies could be in a glorified body that might blow your mind, yeah. but you recognize their spirit. Yeah. So I think people will be a little bit shocked what God has done through people's, how you live this life affects eternity, what you do with this life. It's not just when you die, it's how you live in the spirit for God now, which will reflect in eternity. So I'm looking back, mum's there. I thought, well, I wonder if I went in, I could get God to send an angel back to tell her I made it. Yeah. <laughs> a scheme, mate. I thought, that's risky. That's really risky. No. I thought, how would it affect mum to hear your son's died, you want him in a box or ship them home from Mauritius? Oh. And I'm going, that would break her heart. I'm her eldest son. Mm. We love each other. Mm. Everything she's told me is real. Christ's real. How? Heaven, it's all real. No, I have to go back. It would devastate her. She's lost her mum and dad. This would break her heart. This would shatter her to think her son went to hell. And no doctor, no nurse would be able to tell, no paramedic that he prayed, no diary, no evidence of changed life. It all happened in my heart as I prayed in an ambulance, calling upon the name of the Lord. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who could tell her? No one. I thought, I've got to go back. Wow. I've lived yeah. such a self-centered, selfish life. I must go back and tell her what she believes is real. Wow. So I turned back to God, I've got to go back for mum. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see things in a new light. He paraphrased it. You must see from his light, his eyes of love, from a heavenly, eternal perspective. When, when you receive the Lord Christ in you, eternity, you start seeing from internal perspective, not a temporary earthly. You see with the understanding of temporalness of life yeah. and eternal life. Wow. You see from eyes of love and forgiveness. You see through his perspective. Yeah. I said, I understand. How do I go back? Look back next to mum, dad, brother, sister, and a multitude, hundreds of thousands of people. Canadian geese fly in a V formation. It was like a, a, a sea of humanity going out behind my immediate family. Oh, God, what are all these people? He said, and I want you to go back and tell them what you've seen. Oh, Many God. won't step foot inside a church any longer to hear my name. Well, that's true. I wouldn't be seen dead to church. It's at funerals, maybe weddings or my grandmother. You understood grandma. that point. <laughs> we sometimes get there for Easter or whatever. Yeah. And I'm thinking, that's true. No, in my generation, get a church, mate. That's for some tourists to take pictures of or something. And so I'm looking going, but I don't know these people. I don't love them. I love my mum. Who are they? He said, Ian, I love them. Wow. I desire all of them to come to know me. Wow. I thought, what kind of love could love Oh, I knew some of these people. Mm. I thought, how could God love? I don't have the capacity. It's hard enough just to love one person. How could you love the whole world? 
I said, God, I don't have that capacity. I don't even know that kind of love. But I can genuinely say, I love my mum. I can go back for her. Mm. How do I return down a tunnel, back into darkness, into my body? He said, Ian, tilt your head. Tilt your head. Now feel the liquid drain from your eye. Now open your eye and see. As he, as he said, see, I realized I was back in my body, my head tilting, my eye opening, and I was now back on the real world, on a slab, in a mortuary, with a, a different doctor holding my foot with a scalpel, prodding my corpse like a dead piece of meat. Just like that? Instantly. He said to Lazarus, after being dead four days, Lazarus, come forth. Didn't just take days. It instantly, his spirit was put back in his body. God has power to speak yeah. to cancers. God can speak to lame. God can speak to be healed. Boom. Be free. He's spoken the world's kind of existence. It would have been a lot easier if he'd let me <laughs> flow back. He didn't have <laughs> the, got some of the slow transmission, You know, just a re-entry slowly. Yeah. No, he no. spoke and I'm back in my body. Yeah. I'm now looking at the doctor and the doctor obviously feels like someone's just moved, something's moved. So he turns to see the head tilted, one eye looking at him. And I could see his blood drain from his face. Yeah. It was like, has he seen the evil eyes? This is a corpse that's now had an involuntary twitch because corpses do move. Yeah. They make funny noises even after they're dead. You could see him freaking out. Is he looking at a dead corpse with an evil eye looking at him? Or is that person alive? I'm looking at him going, what the flipping heck are you doing? My foot, you think I'm dead? And I hear the voice of God say, son, I've just given your life back. I went, what? I thought, no wonder this doctor's spinning out. My goodness sake, if that's real, God, can I look out the other eye? So as I tilt my head to the left, my left eye opens, the doctor's going through the ceiling. I mean, it's like Marty He Sharma. must have got such oh, a fright. He was just terrified. Yeah. I'm turning my head to the left. As I open my left eye, here on the doorway, were nurses that had been working on me in the A&E, three of them gawking through the doorway, two above one young nurse, and they see me look at them, and I have the same impression, horror, terror, mixed everything, freakings, like this isn't someone coming out of a coma, this is like the awakening of the dead, you know what I mean? Like, How long were you dead at this point? Well, I didn't know because I'm just watching, I'm back in my body, no yeah. one's talking. I watched one nurse underneath shoot back, smack the other girl in the, in the chin, and in slow motion knocked, knock one of them, to the two of them fall to the ground. The other girl turns and runs. So I've got three nurses grabbing themselves off the ground and running, like they've seen the awakening of the dead. I'm now looking back at the doctor who's stuck and frozen in time. I watch them just slowly put my foot down and step back. I thought, is he going to run too? And I thought, look at him. And then he said, we've done nothing to bring you back. You've been dead for 15 to 20 minutes, you know, and I'm going, he obviously wants me to tell him. <laughs> well, if you saw someone come back from the dead, you've clinically, and yeah. I have no idea that they've actually yeah. clinically pronounced me dead. Yeah. This is not heart, this is brain dead. Mm -hmm. Another doctor has actually written the paper up and walked off. This is the third doctor checking the nerve endings of the spine because sometimes what happens, you can be heart dead and not brain dead. So mm -hmm. when you hit the, so he's now looking at a corpse looking at him, and I'm going, I remember um, Jack Nicholson, one who flew over the cuckoo's nest, you know, when he, yes. where Jack Nicholson flamed, flamed, uh, he, he claimed to be a nutter, and then they threw the key away, and the Indian guy had to get him out. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if I tell these guys, I've seen the guy up there with the white sheet, the white hair, and hearing his voice, mate, they'll have me in a white room with a white jacket with buckles up from behind with Prozac. Yeah. I mean, they'll section me. I thought, mate, I'd have done the same thing. Are you still hearing those voices? So we've got something to we'll fix that. Are you still, we've got a white room. We'll, we'll, we'll put you back in it. So I think, oh, I'm telling these guys. They'll, they'll, they'll think I'm a nutter. I said, God, if I've been there for 15 to 20 minutes, then I can feel nothing from my neck down. I could be a quadriplegic. Oh, wow. Mate, I don't want to live on a machine oh, the rest wow. of my life. If I've just seen you, and this is real, could you please heal my body? I need another miracle. I don't want to live on a machine. Mm. please heal me. If not, take me back to heaven. I'd rather be dead right now. As I did, electricity and power, death come coming on. through my feet. I felt like a tingling power of presence coming in from the tip of my head, right through my body. Within the next three or four hours, my entire body was healed. Come on. So I believe in not only the resurrection power of Christ, but the healing power. And I've seen God with that same presence and power, sometimes like electricity in your hands, lay hands upon people, seen them instantly healed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now it's a... Power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in you, Christ in you, 
healing, using you as a point of contact for the healing power of Christ. So I'm, I'm now moving. I walk out of the hospital completely healed the next day, but I was scared to close my eyes because that's what I did. I went off and started. So yeah. I tried one, I tried the other, tried both, and I realized I didn't go off and leave the planet. <laughs> I went into deep sleep, woke up the next day, and the, the Creole fishermen had followed me. They were just... That like, would have been... Both got terrified. They're looking at me going, thinking I'm a ghost. Yeah. I went to walk towards them, and they, they stepped back. They're terrified. I said, you're dead, man. You're not, you're not alive. They thought I was a spirit. Wow. So I went back in the village and the men and the, 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 the Creoles amongst the, under the tamarind tree were calling me, Ian, make a oh, spirit man. They were frightened to come near me. They scored as a spirit coming to thwart them or torment them. Interesting. So, so they actually were fully in believing that, that oh, spirit oh, beings they show arm. can they, just come back. Oh, and, well, these guys yeah. are the voodoo and witchcraft. Yeah. Just, these, are, these guys are into this. So yeah. they were trying to figure out whether I was a spirit or is actually, or actually real. A real person. And they said, show arm, show arm. And they saw yeah. the scars on my arm. Yeah. And then they, they hit the ground. The old man with, with sticks go, impossible, impossible, cannot happen. <laughs> so I'm going, what? Well, next minute the spirit world gets opened up, I start to see stuff. <laughs> And, it's, and that's another whole journey. Yeah. So then I, I fly back to New Zealand, and as I'm flying back, I began to see in the spirit world. I began to see spirits coming out of idols, and I began to understand stuff. And, I, I mean, I'm freaking out. I said, God, what have I become? Yeah. I've got my Walkman on listening to Super Tramp on Men at Work. Yeah. And God said, you're a reborn Christian. I mean, what? I'm praying. don't want to chase chicks anymore. don't want to get stoned. I don't even want to surf. What the heck? I didn't even want to go to nightclubs. What's happening? I'm praying every day. I'm seen in the spirit world. What the heck? God said, you're a reborn Christian. Interesting. Got home. Um, and I said, God, what do I do now? He said, read a Bible. Yeah. I said, I don't have one. He said, your dad has. Mm. I asked my dad for a Bible. I told him, and, and my mum was freaking out. I mean, I'm the first prodigal son home. <laughs> and what a story to and, tell, you know. And within six weeks, I read the entire Bible. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm weeping. My family think I've flipped out because I won't leave the room other than they bring food to me. <laughs> I was reading, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. I'm seeing the new heavens and new earth. And from beginning to end, I'm blowing out. My, my girlfriend had become a Christian and, and took me down to the church. And when I walked out into the car park at night, I saw the light of the glory of God shine out of the church building. Walked into the church and saw people with radiance on their countenance, like I was reading the Old Testament with Moses. I'm going, these, where are these people? What kind of church? They're not some Pentecostal church. I've never heard of it. I've heard of Anglicans, Methodists, Catholics. And so I see people with shine. Their eyes are shining in radiance. Preacher gets up to speak and is like hearing directly from God. I'm thinking that's like God speaking. Mm. He said, those who are burdened and heavy laden, come and find rest. Mm. Those who receive Christ, come to the altar. Next minute I'm walking up there. He comes down and prays. I get covered in light. And I'm next minute back in the heavenly realm. God said, you can have heaven on earth. You can have an open heaven above your life. It's just fantastic. I get baptized in water, baptized in the spirit. I mean, I, I'm back on the farm milking cows with my sister and brother-in-law. They're my sister's the Lord, her husband. And um, God said, now go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel. Wow, Ian. So that's it. I walked off the farm and, um, in 1993 and have been just living by faith. And Jesus said, freely give. Don't sell the testimony. Mm -hmm. Freely receive, freely give. So I just let anyone copy it. Anyone can have it. Don't make a cent off it. Live out of op shops and store rent a house. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I did in my old hippie days. Yeah. Jesus said, give it away. Wow. Wow. And what's really um, powerful that's really tugging on my heart is that you came back changed. Oh, totally. Totally changed. <laughs> I still had to fix a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of restitution. There's a yeah. lot of asking forgiveness. So, yeah, it was the beginning. It was the foot in the door. I said, yeah, I'm changed. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. the end. But now I'm an alpha. I've seen the omega. Yeah. I've seen the end. Now I've got to walk through sanctification, repentance, restitution. And, well, <laughs> maturity, right? <laughs> Start to grow there. And, and the other thing that was um, interesting that I have picked up on what you're saying is that being reborn – it was like a spiritual rebirth. Yes, in the heart. In the heart that then manifested this ability to be able to see yeah. in the spirit. The inner man changes. Mm. So and, and so that's a Christ in you. 
Mm. So his Holy Spirit. Now, I've, I've seen lots of different spirits, deceiving spirits, lying, idolatrous, mm. ancestral spirits, lots of spirits. I've seen the spirit realm, mm. been in circle meetings, seen all different kinds of stuff where people are trying to talk to the dead. Yeah. But they're actually talking to the spirit world who are imitating the voices of, of the family. Yeah. Because where darkness and where sin abounds, these forces of darkness were able to come in. Yeah. And so I began to realize, oh, my goodness sake, I've dabbled in the occult. I've dabbled in all of this, this stuff. Darkness. And it's been so close to the truth, but it's not truth. Yeah. It's so close because they've had a human need for love and to know where their loved ones. People are trying to talk to them. Mm. But I realize that when a man dies, they go two places. Yeah. And so you can't connect with them. You can't connect with them. That's and we're right. warned not to. Yeah. Don't don't go to science mediums, clear with just go touch them. And I'd done all that stuff as a as a young kid. And I'm going, oh my goodness sake. Lying, deceiving spirits, imitating, trying to connect out of grief, trying to comfort, false comfort, trying to bring false hope. And I began to realize, oh, we need the Holy Spirit. Mm. And then the Holy Spirit can transform us and, and lead us and teach us the truth of the, of the Bible. So, I mean, I'd never had a Bible. Mm. And, I, and I went, he's the lion and the lamb. Yeah, He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's the lamb. El Shaddai, Elohim, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Messiah. And I went, oh, my goodness sake, we've been grafted in. We have been born again of the Spirit of God. Transformation inside. So I devoured this. I, I read and read until the pages were so worn. A friend of mine <laughs> had to re, redo all, all of them, all of you them. know, and they started falling to bits, had to rebind it. And I was given this by a Messianic Jew to become a Christian and um, help disciple me. And I thought, wow, and they've tried to burn this. They've killed people. They've translated yeah. into common English. I mean, men died getting this into the hands from yeah. very elite people who were the only ones who could read it in Latin got this back into common English. Mm. Most people have them collecting dust. Mm. So I read it. And Jesus is the light. Jesus is the truth. Wow. And I thank God for his love. And I thank God for my praying mum. And I thank God we have an opportunity to reach out to our loved ones and, um, and help them find the way back yeah. to the Lord. I was a prodigal son in the pigsty of life. And I came back into the Father's house and restored back to him. Wow. In Look, we're just going to have to wrap this up. What an amazing, amazing testimony of story of your incredible encounter with God and a completely different realm that we than we experience here. You know, if you were to say um, one thing to our viewers today, you know, in just finishing, what would be the biggest takeaway? Well, as you're saying that, I get the word repent. Yeah. <laughs> Turn from your sins. That's the hardest thing is for mankind. God doesn't come to rub our noses and He just wants us to be free from sin. Mm. He who sins becomes a slave to sin, but he who the Son of God sets free is free indeed. Yeah. So my prayer to you who are listening is that say, God, forgive me of all my sins, not some of them, all of them. And I forgive those who have sinned against me. Lord, I forgive those who abused me. See, forgiving them isn't saying what they did was right but it's relieving the hatred and the bitterness and the anger that is like a cancer that will eat your spirit up. You remain a victim with unforgiveness and bitterness. And I release that so that God could heal. Yeah. And then the third thing is, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior, your way, your will. Fill me with your love, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Deliver me from evil, set me free from darkness and bring me into your glorious light. So Lord, I pray that you touch hearts and even now that pray, Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me as white as snow. Forgive me of all my sins. Extend your amazing grace towards me. As I forgive others, like you did on the cross. Father, I forgive them. And I'm in humility, I admit I'm wrong. And I receive you into my heart as Lord and Savior. Lord, lead me. Lead me in the light. Lead me in love. Lead me by your Holy Spirit. Set me free to live a life that brings glory and honor to your son, Jesus Christ. I pray this from my heart. In Jesus' precious name, put a seal upon it, Lord. Those who have prayed, let you touch their hearts. Let them never be the same. We thank you that they are born again of your spirit as they pray this. And that no one can take it away. That their names are now written in heaven. In the Lamb's book of life, paid for with the blood of Christ. No one can erase that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing.
that incredible journey yeah. that you've had and you know it is just an honor to be able to have you here today and to listen to the miracle that you are yeah. and those who are listening aroha yeah yeah love is the greatest love is the key god is love god so loves you he sent his son jesus to die those who believe will have eternal resurrection life and when you die your spirit with his holy spirit will be taken back into glory no more death no more pain no more tears a new heavenly body and a whole new earth as it was created for you ideally in the beginning he now restores you back into that place new heaven new earth in jesus name ignite tv is a non-profit and is funded by its viewers if you've been blessed today by what you have viewed, we invite you to give via push pay or bank transfer. We appreciate your generosity in helping make Ignite TV happen.